None of you here today have to wait until Christmas to open up your first present. Today, every single one of you is given on this first Sunday of Advent the beginning of a new liturgical year, and with that, a new beginning in your spiritual journey. You have quite the gift lying right in front of you. Now, some of you might be saying to yourselves, well, it's okay, it's another Advent. I've seen these things before. Got the purple out once again. Here come the stories about Jesus we've all heard before. They're the same as they've always been. But even though the stories about Jesus' life may be familiar, we can experience them in a different way each year. Every year, every day even, we can pick up greater insights and understanding of God's work in our lives. Now, traditionally, Advent is seen as a time when we truly prepare for the three comings, Advents, of Christ, which is reflected in today's Mass. The coming of Christ in the flesh, the coming of Jesus as Savior and King at the end of the world, as well as the coming of Christ into our lives here in the present moment. Or another way of saying this, Jesus came in history, Christmas, the Incarnation, he comes in mystery, the sacraments, and he will come again in majesty, the second coming. And so as we, we begin our Advent season, we hear the familiar words of Jesus in today's gospel, be watchful, be alert. Or in other words, pay attention. Did you all know that paying attention is a spiritual duty? It is. It's only through paying attention, spiritually speaking, that we can even receive the grace that we need from our Lord, and then to go out and make our love for God and love for neighbor something real in our lives. Because as we all know, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to be going through all sorts of things that are going to demand your attention. We just started the busiest shopping time of the year. As those of you who survived Black Friday can testify to, you guys look pretty good. Okay, you, you hung in there, all right. But then there's all the family and social functions we have to attend. It's a busy, busy time of the year. Our students here, of course, finals coming up, right? And this time of the year goes by really, really fast. There's one thing that we should be the center of our attention during these upcoming weeks. We hardly ever hear about it. What are you giving Jesus for Christmas? You know, that shouldn't be such a surprising question. If anyone deserves a gift for all he's done for us, well, it's our Lord. So let's break this down. How many gifts, Christmas gifts, have you given in the past that became dust collectors by February? Now, don't be thinking about yourselves here, okay, and the best gifts that you have received. No, think about the best gifts that you have given. Which were the ones that truly turned out to be valuable? having a long-lasting impact. The greatest gifts that you have ever given were the ones that showed to the one opening them up. You had thought about them. You knew them. And you believed in them. Those are always the best of gifts. First, you thought about them. You didn't just slap something together, threw it in an envelope, there you go. You actually worked on what they might like. Second, you know what they like because you took the time to know how they are. You got to know this person. And third, you believed in them. You gave them something that said, man, you're the best, and I truly believe in you. So let's apply this then to our Lord Jesus. But first, let's get something out of the way. What do you give to someone who already has everything? Or does he? Does Jesus have everything? Well, materially speaking, he's God, so he certainly doesn't need anything. But he still wants something very desperately that he can't force you to give. He wants your love. But this love is simply a response, a return of the love that he has given to you. God always gives to us the best of gifts, always. You see, our Lord Jesus if you take a look at the three criteria, he thinks about you all the time. All the time. There's never a moment when God is not watching out for you. Secondly, our, our Lord knows you. He knows what makes you tick. 
But he also knows what you need for you to be the absolute best in your life. And that's why our Lord also believes in you. He sees your potential, even if you do not. And there might be some of you here today, but I'm sure there's some of you who know others who are struggling with believing in God. Those people are looking at it from the wrong perspective. You need to let them know to turn things around, even if they have to turn everything around, to see it from the other side, from his side. He believes in you. Even if somebody says, well, I don't believe in God. Got to go there anyway. Got to take a look at it from that perspective anyway. But he believes in you. And then just simply take a look at your life. Look at all the times he's given you second chances. All the times he's gotten you out of trouble. All the times he's blessed you and graced you and taken care of you. It's all right there. Now the thing is, on this first Sunday of Advent, our first reading reminds us that God is our Father. The psalm asks the Father to help us to turn to him. Our second reading gives thanks to God for all that he has done for us. And our gospel today tells us that we're always in need of preparing to do something that makes a difference for the coming of Christ. So what gift can you give to God to express your appreciation for all that he has given to you? As we've been discussing, it's the gift of your love. So how do we prepare to send Jesus such a gift? Take a little bit of a closer look at our first reading. There the prophet Isaiah acknowledges God as Redeemer and Father forever. But in spite of this, the people back then are sinful and their hearts have become hardened to the ways of the Lord. They have stopped thinking about God. It's just that simple. And so Isaiah perceives God's fatherly love for the Israelites, acknowledging them that they are the clay, that God is the potter, and that they are the work of God's hands. Clay, of course, is supposed to be molded easily. And in the hands of a master artist, it can become a masterpiece, a beautiful vessel for the glory of God. Or for the people back then, they didn't want to be molded by God's hands. That's the question that we have to ask. Are we willing to be molded this Advent by God's very own hands? What does that mean, to be clay in the hands of God? It means that whatever God wants us to do, well, we're going to do it. It means that we're going to give up our own will and do God's will. It means become the person that God wants us to be. It refers to our being shaped into the deepest possible way into God's image. We can only do this if we become a gift given back to the giver. And so Advent, then, is just a time to open our hearts open our souls to the grace of God, to truly live the life that our Lord Jesus has shown for us, to make sure we're really trying to do God's will and not just our own. But here's the, here's the key, though. The second reading from Corinthians, it gives us the secret to be able to make this desire of ours a reality. To do God's will, we need the help of his grace. He gives it to us, guys. You have to go to online and get yourself a coupon, man. All right, okay, I've got to pray, pray 12 rosaries a day to get, get this grace. Just show up. It's yours, okay? You've got it. Especially through the sacraments. Especially the sacrament of reconciliation and what we're doing right now, Holy Eucharist. So you're ready to receive? It's free, man. It's ready for you. St. Paul tells us we will not lack in any spiritual gift that we will have the strength of God's faithfulness. We will be attentive. We will be able to do God's will if we count on the help of God's grace. So count on it. Look forward to it. Anticipate it. Because since God is coming to us, we have to be ready to prepare ourselves to receive. Thus, Advent is a good time for a more serious examination of conscience and a good confession. We're going to have plenty of opportunity for good confessions, man. We've got all kinds of times coming up in Advent. But Advent is also a good time for more frequent reception of Holy Communion, of the Eucharist. Now, some of you might be saying to yourselves, well, that kind of sounds like Lent. 
And I kind of go on to mass like during the week. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. Okay, this is purple, right? It's a penitential season. Yeah, do your best you can to go to mass more than just on a Sunday. It's part of the whole preparation. But the thing is, is this. Let us make sure that we overcome the obstacles of this busy time of year to concentrate on the important thing. The coming of Jesus, Christmas Day, the end of time, or today. Because if we can allow the Holy Spirit to help us to do all these things we've been talking about, then we will be able to give Jesus the one gift that he wants, the true gift of our love and of our lives. Because we will have shown the three things in our prayers and our devotions, in our going to Mass or going to confession. We've been thinking about him. We'll also be showing that we know him. We know him as our Savior, but also as our constant companion. But all this Advent preparation will also show we believe in him. We are here to say with all conviction the words of our responsorial psalm. Lord, let us see your face, and we shall be saved.